no big announcement for me. <laughs> so, so DTX Pharma, we're an RNA medicines company based in uh, San Diego, California. And we leverage uh, our technology, it's called Falcon, and we use fatty acids to enable highly efficacious delivery of siRNAs to cells so that they can repress the expression of disease-causing genes. And so we were really attracted to the eye at the onset of company formation for a number of reasons. One, cells in your body do not take this class up at all without some help. It's also um, an unsell or remains an unsolved problem in the eye. These cells have been trained for millions of years to prevent invading RNAs and DNAs from getting into the cells. And so we were also attracted because these, these, this class of molecules, siRNAs, has significant advantages over a sister technology called antisense. They can be 100 to 1,000 fold more potent. They tend to be safer. And what's really cool in the eyes, they can last as much as a year following a single injection. We also were attracted to them because there's lots of diseases in the eye or a number of diseases with significant unmet need where you could imagine deploying this class. And they also have significant advantages versus gene therapy in terms of distribution and route of administration. And so why fatty acids? Every cell in your body has a mechanism to take up fatty acids. Some cells even have specialized mechanisms to take them up. And so you can imagine leveraging these receptors, these transporters to trick fatty acids coupled to siRNAs into getting into cells. And so DTX, we're of course not the first company in the history of RNA therapeutics to want to use fatty acids. The founding team had a lot of experience uh, working in small molecules and other biologics, leveraging fatty acids um, in the context of, of drug development for programs uh, along those lines. And we saw it when we started the company to fill in some gaps in our knowledge relative to the way they'd been deployed there versus RNA therapeutics. And when we founded the company, we started on a screen that looked at number of fatty acids, orientation of fatty acids, length of fatty acids, degree of saturation, a whole host of variables. And what we uncovered was a number of was motifs that enable potent and highly efficacious uptake of siRNA into cells. And we thought, what a better way to understand the cellular uptake component of our mechanism in the eye, because you don't have the confounding effects of stability in the circulation, rapid clearance by the liver and the kidney. And we did this uh, by going after retinitis pigmentosa first. The rationale for RP was really um, related to, uh, so, so one, it's death of photoreceptors. Two, there's 100,000 patients in the US, 100 genes, 300 different mutations, so it's really genetically diverse. And so there's not a lot of patients with any single mutation, and there's not a lot of patients at a point in time within those mutations where intervention would even be uh, likely to work. And so what we decided to do was go after an approach that was agnostic to the underlying genetics, driving retinitis pigmentosa. And there was a literature around this particular target that demonstrated in multiple animal models that you could prevent the uh, that suppression of this gene would result in benefit in mouse models of RP. There's even human data that's, that's consistent with that thesis. And so the target that we're going after, it's a transcription factor and it regulates the expression of a number of disease-causing genes. And so let me show you some data. So here's some data where we intravitrally inject our DTX siRNAs into mice, and then we measure repression seven days later. And what you can nicely see is we get dose-dependent repression of the target gene, more than 90%, at doses that are uh, far uh, below what you would get with an unconjugated siRNA or an equivalent ASO when we inject it. We've got very similar data in non-human primates, and it's very well tolerated. Nothing to write home about. I told you these molecules have a long duration of action, right? In the context of the liver, they can last more than a year following a single injection. Consistent with this, when we dose our uh, mice with the DTX siRNA, you can see we can get more than 90 days of nearly maximal activity following one single dose. Based on the experience of other companies in the liver, we expect this to translate into once a year dosing as we move toward clinical development. The next question, of course, is 
are these therapeutically beneficial in different animal models of the disease? And can we demonstrate that they work in an agnostic way? So what we did was we looked at two distinct animal models of RP. One, a mouse, a mutation in a gene called phosphodiesterase 6B, that's called the RD10 model. It's an autosomal recessive model. And then additionally, we looked in a mouse model of rhodopsin, an autosomal dominant, remote, uh, an autosomal dominant <laughs> mutation uh, called the P23H mutation. And irrespective of the model that we evaluated, when we performed ERGs after a single injection, and we looked anywhere between 28 days and 90 days later, what you can see is you can get nice protection from loss of function, irrespective of whether you're looking at rods or cone function. And what's even cooler, my favorite data, is that the form matches the function. So if you look, it will take me a while to figure out the laser pointer. So if you look in the upper right panel, you can see that the photoreceptor layer is about six to eight cell layers thick after treatment. And that's consistent with the function. And if you look on the left, you can see that there's only a single layer of cells remaining in the mice that were treated with the vehicle. The key proteins that are important for photoreceptor firing and function are also preserved in these animals. So where DTX is today is we're moving this compound through IND enabling studies and we're moving it into the clinic next year. The company raised $100 million earlier this year and we'll use some of that money to get us through proof of concept in RP. We're working with some of the best KOLs, several of which are in this room, to develop a clinical plan that will allow us to, to rapidly understand the technology in humans in what's a very challenging disorder. And so with that said, thank you for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions um, at one of the receptions.